Welcome to the easier way to sell presentation of Close the Deal Without Selling. Here's your host and developer of the easier way to sell, Ike Krieger. Hello, this is Ike Krieger. Welcome to the inaugural podcast of Close the Deal Without Selling. Before I retired in 2010, I was a consultant, a coach, a keynote speaker, and a trainer for clients pretty much all around the world. For over 30 years, I taught people communications techniques that helped them be more effective in sales, marketing, branding, and business in general. In the early 1970s, I was an instructor in the speech department at The Ohio State University while I did my graduate work in communications theories and models. I loved that field. Nearly 20 years later, I was teaching traditional sales training in the real estate industry. It occurred to me that I was teaching people how to do what I didn't like having done to me. I didn't like being sold to, so why would the people that I and my trainees were selling to feel any different? But the traditional sales approach was the only option. So, I developed a new model for effective communication that just happened to work wonderfully in business and in sales. My reason for coming out of retirement is simple. The podcasting revolution offered me an opportunity to deliver this simple, time-tested model for effective communication to you and your fellow listeners all across the globe. To a baby boomer like me, having what's basically a worldwide radio show is very cool. I gathered together all of the information and training materials that I'd created over 30 plus years and I took them out of mothballs. After reviewing all this material, I came to the conclusion that there's just too much good stuff. So, with that in mind, I decided to share all of my training information at no cost to you. How do you like that? What will you learn? You'll learn a communications model that works wonderfully in sales. You'll learn the easier way to sell. And you can learn at your own pace, but first, Let's set some expectations. The easier way to sell can increase your business by 20 to 50% over the next 12 months. However, if that's a goal you plan to reach, you're going to have to listen to more than one or two of these podcasts. The first 10 episodes will provide you with the basic information you need to be more effective in person and on the telephone. Stick with the program. It works. Listen in your home, listen in your car. These podcasts are the perfect length for your commute. Take notes, and if you have any questions or feedback along the way, you can reach me at closethedealwithoutselling at gmail.com. I really want to hear how you found out about this easier way to sell. And all of us here at Close the Deal Without Selling are glad you did. I started sharing this next story in the early 1990s. It really emphasizes just how much of a difference an incremental change in your productivity makes. And FYI, the amount of dollars discussed in this upcoming piece when I first started to share this story was $1 million. Times have changed. If you're like most humans, you get bogged down and depressed when you're not producing the results you say you want to produce every time you go out to sell. Well, I have yet to meet someone who has a 100% closing ratio. I have yet to meet someone who can sell to everyone they meet. So look at the results you're producing now and ask yourself how many more sales opportunities would have to end successfully in order for me to produce the results I say I want. You know, what's your closing average? And when you examine your answer to this question carefully, you'll be surprised at how small a change you need to produce to reach that next level of success. How small, you say? Check this out. Let's begin our conversation using baseball as a metaphor for selling success. What's the difference in annual salary between a Major League Baseball player that has a batting average of 310 and one that has a batting average of 270? 
Not a baseball fan? Well, here's a simple explanation of batting average. A batting average is a percentage of safe baseball hits that are achieved out of every 100 attempts. A baseball player with a 310 average has gotten 31 safe baseball hits out of every 100 tries. A 270 hitter translates to 27 hits out of every 100 tries. So, as I asked before, what's the difference in annual salary between a 270 hitter and a 310 hitter? Well, the average difference in terms of annual salary between these two professional baseball players is approximately $5 million per season. That's right, $5 million. But what's the real difference between these two professionals? Statistically, the difference is four more safe hits out of every 100 tries. In other words, the owners of a Major League Baseball team are willing to pay an athlete who is effective 31 times out of every 100 attempts $5 million more than their counterpart, who's effective only 27 times out of every 100 tries. To illustrate the impact of this seemingly small difference even more dramatically, let's look at it from the flip side. Major League Baseball owners are willing to pay a player $5 million more per year because that player fails only 69 times out of every 100 tries rather than another player that fails 73 times out of every 100 tries. Four more successful hits out of every 100 attempts are all that separates the two an incremental change can result in a very different bottom line. Let's bring this back into the world of selling. You don't need to sell to everyone. You don't even need a dramatic increase in your numbers. You're only a few more successful sales per month away from enjoying the life of a top producer. These podcasts will help you close those few additional sales. Heck, this system will help you with all of your sales in a new and different way. Before you start the process of learning how to close the deal without selling, here's what you need to do. Take a deep breath and imagine yourself making all the sales or bringing in all the new clients you want whenever you want. Imagine yourself feeling confident that you're really great at sales and know that's true. Imagine a future where you're a top salesperson in your industry. What kind of barriers are standing in the way of that kind of sales success? These podcasts will help clarify what's standing between where you are, and where you want to be. Imagine sales efforts that are calm and collaborative rather than frustrating, stressful, and adversarial. But since you're like most other salespeople, your stress and frustration come mostly from a few nagging issues or problems that seem to come up when you try to sell your product or yourself. And here are a few of those exhausting issues. You give a great presentation, but they still don't buy. You get tired of all the stalls and objections. You have a hard time discovering your prospect's real needs. And you really have a difficult time uncovering a budget. And a lot of the time, you find yourself presenting to people who can only say no. Now, one of the concepts you're about to learn is called the yes formula. Like any formula, the yes formula is made up of ingredients or steps that clear a pathway to yes and uncover a no that was going to happen anyway. And each of the five steps of the yes formula will help you close the deal without selling. When you use this simple formula, you'll enjoy better selling results than 95%. No, make that 99% of your competition. One client of mine actually said, the only problem with this selling system is it only works when you use it. So, my first bit of advice is to learn this system and use it. Get your sales and marketing teams into a conference room and all of you listen to these podcasts as an organization. Imagine everyone using the same nearly foolproof way to help your prospects sell themselves, help your prospects close themselves, become a better qualifier, 
Eliminate objections. No kidding. You'll learn to use the telephone more effectively. And bottom line, you'll learn to close the deal without selling. Whose problem are you trying to solve? That's the question. Motivational speaker Zig Ziglar said you achieve your dreams by helping others achieve theirs. Basically, you'll get what you want if you help others get what they want. And according to the YES formula, here's the way to do that. You focus on solving other people's problems. The YES formula defines business as the ability to solve other people's problems and make a profit. Based on that definition, your mission, should you choose to accept it, is one of solving other people's problems. If you focus on solving other people's problems and you make a profit, what will happen to your problems? They will disappear. So, if you want to close the deal without selling, you focus on the problems of others. Easy enough. Although focusing on the problems of others may seem like a simple fix, it's not. It's your human nature to focus primarily on solving your own problems. When you find yourself trying to solve your own problem when you're selling, that's okay. But recognizing whose problem you're trying to solve is an important step in the process. But then you have to remind yourself to get back to this selling system because now you have a choice. The YES formula provides you with an option that allows you to move away from traditional show-and-tell selling. You already have the skills necessary to make the YES formula work for you. You just have to remember to use these skills in the correct combination. If you're on Facebook or LinkedIn, why don't you follow our page, which is Close the deal without selling. No matter what you want to achieve, the YES formula is designed to help you reach that outcome as a byproduct of helping others get what they want. When people realize you're there to help them solve their problem rather than yours, something very powerful occurs. You no longer have to break through their defenses you end up bypassing them. Even traditional objections disappear. Now, how is this possible? What produces this result? With this system, you are a receiver of information rather than a giver. You'll discover that your prospect is a willing and eager participant ready to provide you with the information you request. And why is the prospect so willing and eager? This willingness stems from their belief that once you have this information, that information will help you solve their problem. How does this relate to objections, you ask? Well, if your prospect is the one describing to you in all sincerity why and how they believe your product, your service, or your idea will help them solve their problem, they're in essence willingly giving you the sales presentation. And if that's the case, who do they have to object to? They can only object to themselves. And that's why objections disappear when you use this system. Remember, when you say it, it's selling. When they say it, it's true. Stay tuned at the end of the podcast, and I'm going to tell you about our brand spanking new Close the Deal Without Selling accompanying action guide that will help you learn or teach the easier way to sell. I'm very excited about this thing. Let's focus on that voice that lives inside your head. Everyone hears that voice. This is our internal dialogue. What is your internal dialogue about selling? What are some of the words that come to mind when you think of the word salesman? Go ahead, just say them out loud, write them down. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if the word or words you came up with were not very flattering. The responses that I get most of the time usually include one or more of the following. Use car. 
pushy, aggressive, slick, liar. Since you're listening to a podcast entitled Close the Deal Without Selling, I'll make a safe bet and assume that you're involved in the world of sales. If you're in sales and the words used car, pushy, aggressive, slick, or liar are included in your internal dialogue, what kind of self-image must you have? As a matter of fact, with that kind of internal dialogue shooting around in your mind all of the time, it's amazing that you sell anything at all. Do you want to appear to your prospects and clients anything like the words you associate with the term salesman? Of course you don't. But this is the way you've been programmed. But now you have a choice. The information and programming you've received from your parents and your parents' substitutes like your teachers or your clergy, has had an indelible impact on us. It really doesn't matter in what culture you were raised or your first language. The universal truths are the same. For example, what have you heard since you were a child about communicating with others? You fill in the blanks. Never speak to. Children should be. Never speak unless. And the answers are, of course, never speak to strangers. Children should be seen and not heard. And never speak unless spoken to. You've been programmed to avoid speaking to strangers. You're supposed to keep your mouth shut. And you're only supposed to speak when someone has spoken to you. And these truths cross all cultural lines. But... These truths present an immense challenge to anyone involved in the world of sales. And this is a real good time for me to remind you again for the first time that just because you believe something is true, that doesn't make it true. It just makes it true for you. The things that we have been told not to do are what salespeople need to do to make a living. You have to speak to strangers every day. You strive to make yourself heard amidst all of your competition. The very nature of the sales profession has you speak before you're spoken to. So for you to be effective in selling, you basically have to do what you've been told and trained not to do. And this might provide a clue as to why your commitment to just go out and sell may not be that strong. The yes formula provides a choice that shifts your program internal dialogue from one of salesmen to that of a problem solver. This shift makes a profound difference in your attitude toward sales. Okay, it's time to do a little housekeeping. And first, I just want to let any of you out there who are sales managers know that we have a simple, affordable licensing program for your company to help you have everyone on your sales team follow the same identical formula for sales success. If you're interested in that, contact me at close the deal without selling at gmail.com. And second, a workbook for the entire podcast is going to be available in a very short period of time. If you have interest in obtaining one of these workbooks, please contact me at you'll never guess where. Close the deal without selling at gmail.com. Okay, that's plenty for our first episode of the Close the Deal Without Selling podcast. We covered a lot. I'll be clarifying as we go along. And in the next podcast, we'll be getting more into the yes formula and why I think you should stop giving a presentation altogether. Hmm. That'll keep you thinking, won't it? This is Ike Krieger. See you next time. Hello, this is Ike Krieger. Believe it or not, I'm coming to you from the future. <laughs> I've just finished episode number 40 of the Close the Deal Without Selling podcast, and I want to let you know in advance that if you're set on getting better at selling and marketing, you're about to experience idea after idea that will turn your contacts into contracts more easily and more often. Throughout the podcast, you'll hear me talk about the accompanying action guide. 
Here's the story with that. You might listen to the podcast and discover bits and pieces that you could use in your life, but you might not need to make an investment in the action guide. For those of you who are serious about learning or teaching the easier way to sell, the action guide is indispensable. What's in the guide? Download the free action guide preview at sellandmarketbetter.com. Remember to claim the special listener price. Just use the coupon code found in the episode show notes. 